chat button on the list and then um, you can put whatever message you want. For example, we could do a quick test here and uh, you could enter from what country you are participating here on this uh, webinar. So feel free to put that in the chat box. So we have a little bit of an impression where everyone is coming from. And there I see already United Kingdom, Switzerland, Finland, Italy, Canada, fantastic, Brazil. Um, so a bit from around the planet, even Australia. Welcome from Australia. Uh, that is uh, fantastic. Singapore, fun, super. So uh, there you can put in where you are coming from or any other ideas, thoughts that you have, want to share with other people. If you have particular questions during this uh, session, you uh, pick the question box, which is next to it on the check box, and you can enter your questions there. We see these questions and we can answer these questions. If you want to uh, participate live and uh, ask your question live with audio during this webinar, that's possible as well. You can do this by clicking the raise hand button. We will get a notification. We see it from here and then we can enable you to ask your question. Uh, to ask your question, you then enable your microphone and then normally you should be able to ask your question so that everyone can hear you while you ask this question here uh, in this um, webinar. And don't forget, of course, after you ask your question, you can mute the microphone again. We can also do it from here. Um, so um, that's um, basically it, I think. Uh, we can get started. I see actually a first uh, raise of hand. So let's uh, maybe already test out if uh, Howard uh, still has the raise hand on. Uh, Howard, do you uh, hear me? Hello, uh, Howard, you need to enable your microphone and then you should be able to speak. There you go. I didn't mean to have my, <laughs> I didn't mean to leave the raised hand up, but it works, so thanks. Seconds. Howard, press the microphone button and then normally you should be able to speak. Yeah, I've got the mic button on, but my, my no. speaks aren't working. Well, not sure if that was intended or not by Howard. I don't think so. He removed the raised hands. But that's uh, the way it should work. So now that you are a little bit familiar with the features that we have in this first version of the Web Academy platform, let's uh, move on in this uh, presentation and um, learn how we created this um, platform. So today is all about TMS WebCore and uh, the OpenTOC uh, RTC server that is uh, in the back uh, responsible for offering you this webinar experience. If you're not familiar with the WebCore yet, uh, this is the link to um, the WebCore product page where you can find TMS WebCore downloaded. There's a fully functional trial version and you can start playing with it. Don't worry, um, we will also send you um, a PDF of all the slides of uh, today so that you can also have a look at it later. So what um, will we discuss in this uh, webinar? Well, the whole experience for the Web Academy consists of several parts. There is, uh, first of all, the uh, event publishing and uh, registration which uh, are steps that you all did, otherwise you um, would not be here. Um, so we will have a brief discussion about that. Then, of course, there is uh, the TMS WebCore client application that you are all using right now at this uh, moment. And this is the uh, web application that is used by attendees, viewers. And then there is an other application with uh, slightly more functionality, which is the uh, application that I'm using myself to do this uh, presentation here for you. So let's first have a look at the event publishing and registrations. So uh, that is where you could subscribe to participate on this um, webinar. And this is um, part of our website. 
and as our um, website is uh, historically for historic reasons based on uh, asp code uh, that is a part that we did in asp code for the obvious reason that it hooks into all the existing functionality that we built up over the years uh, so we did not uh, redo that we took advantage of what was already there and applied it uh, to be as productive as possible so what we do actually is um, when we want to um, create a new webinar we need to create a new event with a unique id the name of um, the webinar a unique name of course we need to determine the time of uh, this uh, webinar and uh, as this webinar is being viewed from uh, around the planet we uh, need to pick a utc time so that uh, time is understandable for everyone in his um, location and we give it an event title and an event description. And this is what you see on uh, this page. The URL is there uh, in front of you. Um, when we have created such an event, this is what you see on our website. And from there you can register and registering all we um, need for that is uh, your name, your email address, and uh, that's it. That is sufficient. Um, to um, participate and uh, from there when you have registered we uh, send out an email with the confirmation of this registration and a specific link to uh, start up the webinar when the time is there so what is actually technically happening in uh, the background what is happening is that the your name is captured in the database, which is in a Microsoft SQL server that is behind uh, all this. So your name is captured, your email is captured, the event ID, ID for which you registered is also uh, saved. And then uh, a unique GUID is generated for each uh, registration. And that is uh, the GUID that you can also see in the URL the link that starts up uh, the webinar when uh, the time of the webinar is there and that is also the link that you have received in your email so basically what happens is you enter name and email address and um, we save this in a database together with at that moment a uniquely generated GUID and that is all saved in the SQL uh, Microsoft SQL Server database and that's it and the time of the webinar has uh, arrived all you do is click this link and this link will start a tms webcore web application um, that will um, receive the guid and can then do all the necessary things uh, with the guid to start the webinar for you um, when it receives the guid what uh, it what this uh, TMS WebCore web application will do is it will perform an HTTP uh, REST API request uh, to our tmssoftware.com server. And um, this server will answer this uh, HTTP request with the information about the user. So your username uh, will be retrieved together with the ID for the event. And also uh, it will receive out of that database in session information and um, a token i will discuss this token later in this uh, webinar the name for example is uh, the name which you see uh, at the uh, right top of the screen next to the red uh, logout button and before um, diving a little bit deeper in, in the full operation of um, the web academy um, we first need to um, give a little bit information about um, open talk and web rtc so web rtc is a uh, protocol and web standard that is uh, used for real-time communication of uh, audio video uh, over the web so RTC, that's obviously real-time communication. 
and that's a specific protocol and that is uh, implemented in all modern current uh, browsers even on mobile devices so if you happen to uh, participate on this webinar via your uh, mobile phone or tablet uh, that will work as well we have tested it on android uh, mobile phones on iphone mobile phone tested it on uh, tablets it is working in every modern browser the web rtc api and protocol is implemented in these uh, browsers and then of course um, the rtc protocol is a specification of communication between the client and the server so there is a server needed as well and as an rtc server we have used for this um, web academy platform the open talk service which is a uh, service from the company vonage so you if you uh, google that open talk and vonage you will land on this uh, website where you can uh, learn and get started with open talk so um, how is uh, this uh, actually working um, this is a, a diagram of how uh, web rtc is uh, used together with the open talk rtc server so uh, left and right you see two uh, clients and um, you see at the top the open talk server so each client can actually publish and subscribe at the same time uh, for streams and a stream is typically audio or screen share or anything else so a um, client can publish its own stream of information for example if you would have a one-to-one -one communication tool that shares uh, the video of both uh, participants that would be possible if client one publishes his camera stream and client two is doing the same uh, this communication happens between the open talk server and the clients and the client can also subscribe to uh, streams so um, that means that this enables you to see the video from the other clients uh, that is a scenario one-to-one -one communication but obviously we are using this here in a slightly uh, different way where there is one presenter and multiple clients um, and so let's have a look at um, what the web rtc protocol provides and what uh, is actually happening behind the scenes in the communication with the open talk server so i mentioned there were uh, there is the concept of streams and so streams are what you can publish or subscribe to and typically this is an audio stream a video stream or a screen share stream and in addition to streams there is the concept of signals so signals is a, a concept a communication where you send data from a client to um, an other client or to any other client that is uh, connected to a session uh, that is running on the open talk uh, server um, the client will typically register to receive specific signals each uh, signal can be unique specified registered and then the client can decide okay i want to see or uh, receive the information for a specific signal and um, it will get a uh, notification and a javascript event actually behind the scenes when this signal is uh, received open talk itself already defines a couple of standard signals that are typically used in combination with uh, audio video and screen share uh, streams but in addition to that you can um, register your own custom signals to exchange whatever data you want between uh, the clients connected in a session um, with open talk so if we have a look at the tms web academy this is a diagram that visualizes the signals and the streams that are being used you let's start with the streams with the blue arrows so from the presenter application we have an uh, we have actually three streams going from presenter to the open talk cloud service 
And this is obviously the camera you're looking at. This is the audio you're listening to. And this is the screen share that you see um, central in uh, the screen. So these are three published streams from the presenter going to the OpenTalk Cloud service. And then your uh, web client application as an attendee for this webinar will um, uh, subscribe to these streams. So that's this subscription is responsible for you seeing the web camera, the share screen and the audio. At the same time, there are also signals used. And um, one of these signals, for example, is when you are using the chat service or when um, you would raise your hand, uh, that is by using a signal. So if you actually put something in uh, the chat box, um, that will be, um, that will start with an, um, Okay, I'm, I'm actually looking now at the chat box. Um, so that will uh, be active or activated by a signal that sends some uh, data to the OpenTalk cloud service. And as the other attendees are registered for the chat uh, signal, they will receive uh, the text that someone has sent to the chat box. Other signals are uh, the signal that um, shows the presenter application uh, who is um, attending this uh, webinar or who raised the hand. So if you click the raise hand button, this will uh, trigger a signal that will be received by the presenter. The presenter will see the user who raised that uh, signal and uh, he will be able to um, enable the microphone of the attendee that raised the hand. And that by itself is uh, another signal. So, um, as I explained, uh, the presenter here um, can publish up to three streams. That is what is happening right now as you experience the audio screen share and uh, video. And it is the presenter who controls when a client, so an attendee, someone listening in, in the webinar can publish his own audio stream. So it is from here that we control whether you uh, as a client can publish your audio stream to open talk. And um, when this audio stream is uh, published, all the other attendees can uh, subscribe to it, are subscribed to it and will, of course, uh, hear the audio of the other person speaking. Um, something about uh, a little note here about uh, privacy and uh, GDPR and all these uh, kind of things. Um, as a uh, client, of course, um, you are fully in control whether your microphone is used for um, publishing or not. Uh, after all, you have the button with the microphone where you can enable it or disable it. And we cannot remotely enable your microphone um, in case you would think that uh, there is some kind of spy functionality in this application that is uh, not possible. That's not the way how it is uh, implemented. So the viewer, you uh, are responsible for uh, enabling your microphone. The only thing we can do is enable that you enable the microphone and disable the microphone again after a question was handled. Uh, another thing is uh, seeing who is attending this uh, webinar. So also this is uh, something um, that uh, when you do not want that your name is seen among the list of participants, uh, that is um, obviously no issue um, when you do not put anything in the chat box. Um, no one else can actually see that you are participating here on this webinar. So this uh, privacy, if wanted, is also uh, guaranteed. So let's uh, start diving a little bit in the code behind these uh, things. And first of all, we start with um, the tool that is responsible for creating sessions. 
and for handing out session IDs and session tokens at the moment the webinar starts. This is at this moment as we have implemented it here. This is an uh, offline.NET application created with C Sharp. Why is this created with C Sharp? This is because the OpenTOC SDK for generating session IDs and session tokens uh, is an, a library that is offered in uh, .NET. Uh, so unfortunately at this moment, there is not yet something you can directly use uh, from uh, Delphi, for example. So what this uh, SDK actually allows to do is the following. You create a session, for example, this session today from um, our time four in the afternoon till five in the afternoon, you create a session and you receive a unique session ID. To create such a session, you need to use an uh, specific own uh, application key and secret. So there is an API key and an API secret that you uh, register for at uh, OpenTOC. That means that uh, OpenTOC can uniquely identify who created this uh, specific session. And so this is the first step, creating your uh, session ID. And um, when this session is created, what we need to do is create for each user who registered for this webinar, create for each user a session token. It is actually with um, the session ID in combination with the session token that um, an, um, a viewer of uh, this webinar will receive or will be able to um, subscribe to a stream from the OpenTOC server to uh, receive signals from the OpenTOC server. So here is the C Sharp code that generates this uh, session ID. And well, here in this case, it is generating the uh, session token for each um, registered user for the webinar. As I explained, this is an offline tool. So this is a uh, Windows.NET application that um, receives from our server, again, through an HTTP request, it receives all the users who have uh, registered for this uh, webinar. It gets this information and it will, for each uh, participant, generate such a token. And so, um, when it has generated this uh, unique token, it will post this uh, token to the server. So in our database in uh, on the tmssoftware.com website, in this uh, database, we have the registered user email, name, session name, session ID, and uh, the session token. It is then, um, the WebCore web client application that you are now using and, and viewing that will request with the GUID, will request this session ID and session token. And this is uh, what it will start to use when it will connect to the OpenTOC uh, session and uh, subscribe to the streams. So this here is a little bit in a diagram how this uh, all works uh, together. So the database sits on the tmssoftware.com server. Um, there you register and all the information for your registration is saved. With an offline tool, we retrieve for a specific session all registered users and we use the OpenTOC SDK to generate once a session ID and for every participant a session token. And we perform an HTTP post to uh, push this information in the database on the tmssoftware.com website. And of course, the session ID session token is retrieved from the OpenTOC server, as you can see at uh, the bottom. Then uh, you start the Web Academy client application, the TMS WebCore client application with the GUID and perform an HTTP request with this GUID 
to retrieve your uh, specific assigned session ID and session token. And that session ID session token is used to start your session. And that is actually what enables you to see and participate right now in this uh, session. And now we are in the TMS WebCore client application, the code uh, that is responsible, that the code that is actually executed when you uh, used this um, webinar here. So the very first thing that uh, happens is um, to initialize the session with OpenTOC. OpenTOC is the object. It is, an, uh, in this case, it became a Pascal object because we have a wrapper class, a Pascal wrapper class around the OpenTOC JavaScript library for communicating with the OpenTOC server. And so you use this Pascal object and the init, init session call um, with the session ID retrieved for um, the user that um, started the client application. There is also an API key used here, which is our OpenTOC API key. And with this, your session is created. When the session is created, the first thing you do is register for signals that your application will use. And you can see here uh, already several, the first five ones actually are uh, standard open talk signals. And uh, the last uh, six ones uh, are custom uh, defined signals for application use itself. So you see here the registration by a name, a string identifier for these signals, and you see the do stream created, for example, which is a Pascal method that will be called when the stream created signal is received. And uh, when this session is created, we can um, connect to it. Um, connection is happening with the token that is also generated per user. So the session is the same for everyone connecting here today. The token is unique for everyone uh, participating. So the second step is that once you opened the session, you connect to it with your own uh, unique token. And um, on the other side, this is what happens on the side of the viewer, on your side, on uh, our side, the presenter side. There is some uh, additional things that are happening, which is uh, preparing for publishing the streams that are um, created, that are published, and that you as a client viewer are um, subscribing to. And so this here is the code that performs this um, subscription or this publishing, uh, sorry, for the uh, streams, the three streams in this case. And you can see here uh, some properties um, that are passed along with uh, the name for the stream you want to publish for this uh, open talk in it publisher call. Um, and this here, in this case, we register for the share screen where you have a specifier for the size of um, or the resolution with which you will um, share the screen. As I explained, there are three streams that are uh, registered and uh, published. First, as you can see here, is um, the share screen uh, stream. Next one is um, the audio stream. And then the last stream is uh, the camera screen. And this is, um, this has the name uh, presenter. And so um, when this um, stream is published, um, then the a client will receive a signal um, informing that this stream has been published and is uh, available. And at that moment, the client can uh, subscribe to it. So here uh, you can see that we actually uh, registered to receive a signal when a stream is 
created, published by the presenter. And so uh, this do stream created Pascal method will be called when the uh, presenter has published such a stream. And uh, at that moment, the client will uh, get the details of that stream and will be able to subscribe to that stream. So here you see the registration for the signal when the stream is created and you see uh, the code that is executed when um, the stream, the do stream created method is called. And um, when you receive uh, this um, notification that the stream is available, you can subscribe to it as a client. And um, to perform that uh, subscribe, you have um, the object or the class TOT in its subscriber options that allow you to set a couple of options for a subscription to this uh, specific stream. And so, as you can expect, this is happening for the three streams. So you can see here um, the event handler for um, the do stream created. And you can see that this is an if uh, structure where um, different things are happening for the three different streams. What you actually see here, uh, for example, the first one, uh, session.subscribe for the screen, uh, which is the share screen. Uh, the screen parameter, the second parameter of this method, actually is the ID of a diff in this uh, web application. And that means that you actually um, tell OpenTalk that um, the content of that stream should be put, should be placed in that specific HTML element with the ID screen. And the same applies to the presenter, which uh, presenter stream, which is uh, the camera. And so we have the, the little box with the camera that you can, can see at the bottom right side is an HTML element with ID presenter. And there is also an HTML element that uh, where the audio is uh, routed through. So that is what concerns uh, the streams. Let's have a look now at the signals. Uh, signals are in fact uh, small objects that you send from either from one user to one specific other user. If you specify the user name, it's sent to one specific user. If you do not specify the name, that uh, signal object is sent to everyone. And uh, the data of that signal is a JSON object. So we uh, create a JSON object and we set that to the data parameter of the TOT signal data uh, class. And then we can uh, call the method session.signal of that uh, specific message. The code snippet that you see here is actually the signal that is used for sending out the chat message. So if you would have added a message to the chat uh, window, this is the code that is being executed. So what is happening is that the text that you have entered is wrapped into a JSON um, class, a JSON object, sorry. And that uh, JSON object is set to the data of the message and that message is put on uh, the signal. And um, in this uh, case, uh, you determine with the two property whether the signal is sent to everyone or the signal is sent to just one, um, one client. Here you can see that um, the signal that is uh, used to uh, raise uh, hand and in response enable the microphone on the client is obviously uh, only uh, sent back to the, the one who raised the hand. So you can see here in the raised hand connection, which is the signal that was received when uh, someone raises his hand. Um, it is sent back to um, the one who sent this uh, raised hand to uh, the signal where uh, someone can enable his uh, microphone. And this here, for example, is um, actually 
for every client, this uh, signal handler is uh, implemented, active, and is being executed. So if uh, the signal is sent for a chat message, um, everyone listens to that uh, specific signal. And so when you um, receive this signal, when it is triggered, this Pascal handler is called and it just um, receives that JSON object and uh, gets the actual message out of that JSON object and will put it in a web list control, which is actually the chat window that you see on the right side. And these are all signals that are used in our web academy. Stream created, I explained, signal that is used when um, a uh, stream is published. Um, there is the chat uh, signal, there is a logout signal. So when you would log out of the session, you send out a signal and that will actually inform all other clients as well as the presenter and will lower the number of participants on this um, webinar. And the same applies for logout. Connection created, connection destroyed. These are two standard open talk signals that always exist. And obviously this is uh, when your connection is established or when your connection is um, destroyed. You send this as a signal around to possible other uh, clients connected to the open talk server. And then uh, a couple of custom uh, defined uh, signals. So here uh, I have summarized these things uh, again. So uh, the meaning of what these signals stand for, stream created, connection created, connection destroyed, the standard open talk signals that I mentioned uh, just before. And here are the custom uh, signals. So the signal with the identifier MSG is um, a signal used for sending chat messages. The signal question is a signal um, for when you put something in the question box. The username signal is um, the signal that uh, is sent to the presenter so that uh, we see the name of uh, the participant in a list um, so that's something in addition we see in the presenter that not uh, the, the viewers, the client uh, viewers uh, can see. So that's a signal going from viewers to presenter only. The logout signal is a custom uh, signal. And then we have the raise hand and lower hand signal. So if you click the raise hand button, that signal is sent from client to and is received, listened to by the presenter. And the same applies for the uh, lower hand signal. And uh, from the presenter, there is um, also a signal going out from presenter to client, the allow talk signal. And that uh, signal indicates that the microphone of the client can be enabled. And the stop talk uh, signal is a signal that um, will actually stop um, the publishing of the microphone stream at the site of the client. So how can you uh, get uh, started with it? It's actually um, quite simple, WebCore is the framework that is used to create this uh, application. I guess that most of you have already started and get your feet wet using uh, TMS WebCore and uh, for using the OpenTOC WebRTC server, we have ready to use Pascal wrapper classes for you. You can find this on the page um, webpartners.asp where you will see, if you navigate to that page, where you will see this uh, box with a download. And in this download, you will find uh, the needed files to get started with um, OpenDoc. You will also find a uh, sample project. And um, with that sample project, you should be up and running for a um, one-to-one -one, um, camera sharing uh, application. So this is included in that uh, download. 
In addition, there is also a uh, blog article that might be of interest for you if you want to get started with um, OpenDoc. And you can find this blog article here describing um, the OpenDoc component to achieve that. And there is a live test. So you can also live test um, the demo application from this uh, URL. One thing to note is, of course, that in this um, live test application, you will need to enter your specific uh, API key, your specific session ID, and at least two tokens if you want to test out one-to-one uh, -one communication tokens for users uh, performing this test. So if you uh, navigate to um, the Vonaphone um, a web page for OpenTOC, uh, then you will find the um, OpenTOC playground. And that's where you can uh, register such an API, get and register for an API key, get the session ID and get a token and get started uh, right away. So you just copy and paste these uh, values into um, the live test application that is running on our server. And now something different is something about costs. Um, OpenTOC uh, obviously also has an, um, let's say, an, a model for a business model. Um, you can, uh, for a limited amount of connections that you do, there is a free uh, model. If you have a higher usage, it is uh, required to um, have an, uh, a kind of subscription with OpenTOC and uh, there will be a cost associated with using the OpenTOC WebRTC servers. So uh, I wanted also to uh, explain a little bit what uh, a possible cost calculation is for using the uh, WebRTC server from OpenTOC. Here in this example, uh, this is based on a monthly subscription that is about $10 per month. And in that $10 per month, you have a usage of 2000 minutes of communication per month. That is what is included. If you go above that, um, there is a cost per minute that is calculated. Very important is now to understand how this um, cost is calculated. The cost is calculated um, and is, is from the formula, uh, the number of streams times the number of minutes uh, consumed. And here you need to be careful. Um, here in our web academy, we are actually at this moment using three streams. Uh, so um, there is the video stream, there is the audio stream, and there is the share screen stream. So we have three streams. Suppose that this session uh, takes uh, one hour. Uh, that means 60 minutes. And uh, this uh, number is uh, calculated per user. So if there would be um, 50 users, we will have 50 users using three streams, uh, which means already 150 times uh, the number of minutes for a 60 minute session uh, that gives you an idea of um, how it is calculated. Note that if you would at some moment uh, use the raise hand function, that means that at that time a stream is created, an extra stream is created um, for one user. And uh, obviously that uh, extra stream need to be taken in account for the calculation. So well, here I, um, I made actually a sample uh, calculation for an uh, open talk um, based webinar like this one, which is a quite realistic uh, scenario and is, is close to um, the reality. So if you organize a one hour webinar for 50 people and one presenter, that means 51 uh, times three streams, 60 minutes uh, webinar. 
So you have a consumption in total of 9,180 minutes. And so the cost for these minutes is here um, 0 0.005. And that means that um, for a webinar like this, you need to take in account that this will uh, cost, I guess this, this actual webinar will have an open talk cost of about 40 um, euros. All right. Um, this was the content of this um, very first webinar we organize here. And so um, I'm glad to take your questions if there are any uh, questions. I see two questions in the question pane. I will have a look at these. Does the presenter know which of the attendees has the microphone? Yes, that is the case. So um, the presenter application has an extra tab. And on that extra tab, you can see the name of the user who did a raise of hand. And then the presenter can select that name from the list and can click uh, a button to enable the microphone at the side of uh, the user. And it's only then that the microphone uh, can be activated. So um, that's, that's a choice that we can make sure that no one will cause also uh, noises, unwanted noises during sessions. It's always the presenter that is in control and can uh, activate or deactivate microphones. It can allow the user to activate the microphone. It will not force the user to activate uh, the microphone. So um, yes, we see uh, the name, which is actually the name with which you registered on uh, for this specific webinar. Uh, so if you registered with the name John Doe, that is the name that we will see in uh, that list. Um, and second question is, is it possible to change the quality of the video shared desktop by the attendee? At this moment, there is no such uh, setting uh, in the viewer application for selecting this quality. My understanding is that it will uh, try to, um, to use uh, the best possible quality for, for offering the best kind of experience. Also, if the net, if there is a temporary glitch on uh, the network, uh, you will see a degradation in uh, video and audio quality. Um, it, it tries to give you the best possible uh, performance. Um, okay, I see another suggestion from my colleague uh, Wagner. Um, Yes, exactly. So uh, we are now here organizing this um, webinar um, where we want to inform you about what we are working on, uh, what you can do with our tools, all these uh, kind of things. But that's that's not all. That's just the start of it. Um, we have way more plans actually uh, with this uh, platform. This is only version uh, 1.0. Uh, in addition to uh, using this uh, platform for free webinars where we will inform you about uh, our products, we also plan to offer uh, training. So if you um, want to have in-depth training on a specific product, which actually happened before uh, COVID-19 in, uh, in uh, real life, we did uh, trainings here at our office. We did trainings uh, where that we organized in uh, some uh, hotel, for example. Um, so this is the direct online equivalent of such a, a training. Uh, so that is also something that will uh, come in the near future. You can expect that shortly, but that's not all. We also want to um, further work on this platform to enable, for example, one-to-one -one, uh, consulting sessions. So if you um, have a uh, specific um, development where you want our advice consulting or you, you want to highlight some specific uh, issue or whatsoever, uh, we can also use this platform in, in a further uh, version. 
where we will also um, enable that we can see what is happening on your screen. Now you can also only see what is happening here on our screen, but uh, that is also planned and uh, coming. Um, and I want to inform you uh, this way that uh, we already have the next webinar planned, which is uh, happening on uh, Tuesday. It's actually the same time on Tuesday. It's uh, organized by uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Wagner Landgraf. Wagner is uh, the um, product manager and architect, the deepest expert you can have in the uh, TMS business line of tools. So um, Wagner will uh, give you a tour around what's coming in 21 for the business line of products, which will include um, quite a few new exciting developments such as um, an um, GraphQL um, toolkit. So you will be able to build your own GraphQL uh, server client. Um, there is also an authentication tool coming. So to facilitate easily building um, multi-user authenticated applications um, and, and yeah, have the components or the classes ready for you to build in, uh, build in your X data servers, for example. Uh, there's also on uh, workflow, uh, several things coming, but I won't reveal too much more. I leave that to my colleague uh, Wagner on um, Tuesday. Of course, um, this is what we have scheduled now. We have many more ideas and plans for webinars uh, coming. But also, of course, uh, your input is uh, crucial in determining the further content that we will um, give here on our uh, Web Academy platform. So if you think that some specific topic uh, is uh, relevant and interesting for you, uh, feel free to uh, chime in and uh, send us a message and we will sit together here and uh, see how we can shape this into um, a webinar. Another question is uh, that I see here is uh, are the streams uh, encrypted? Um, that's a good question. Um, and at this moment, I'm not sure what kind of, uh, I already see that my colleague uh, Bradley chimed in. Thank you, Bradley. Uh, so everything is indeed encrypted in AAS 128-bit uh, encryption. So that is actually a functionality um, directly out of the box performed by the uh, OpenTOC servers. I see at this moment no more uh, questions. So there are still a few minutes to ask questions. Or if you are uh, brave, you can also try the raise hand function. And then uh, we should be able to have you uh, live here in this um, webinar. I see no brave people yet. I'm having a look at the question box, no new uh, questions. Yeah, the, I see here in the chat box when uh, Howard was speaking from the US, I actually didn't hear it and I know now the reason why I didn't hear it. I'm here on a dual uh, monitor uh, system and uh, the HDMI decided that the audio should be going through the connected screen which has no uh, speakers. So it makes it a little bit difficult to hear the sound. I should just uh, change that setting on uh, my system. And I see another question coming from uh, Bavo. Um, so the next things planned, um, what is coming? Um, well, multi-host that is uh, coming. So uh, now I'm the only one speaking. Uh, so we will add the capability that, for example, I can watch over what Wagner is doing and uh, sit here at the same time. So that's uh, something that uh, is coming. Um, we will also um, add the functionality that um, the share screen 
will come from another video source so that you can have the the camera video on top or integrated with an easier flexible switching between camera and share screen that is also uh, coming I, as i explained what's also coming is that we uh, open up an invitation uh, for letting users people or attendees uh, share their screen so there is a kind of one-to-one -one communication uh, possible what is also planned and that would be uh, something i'm really interested in in the chat box that is a switch to uh, between dark mode and light mode um, that's also on the to-do list um, if you i would be interested uh, put it in the chat box if you say this is really the number one priority i uh, dislike this dark theme and i really want a light theme put it in uh, the chat box so we have an impression of how uh, important that is to you we had quite some internal discussions about that topic so i'm very curious to hear any fans for a uh, light team it is being worked on you will be able to switch actually you will be able to um it will be developed with the tms web core and in the web core framework there is actual actually the capability to detect whether your windows or your mac device is in light or in dark theme and um, and will adapt uh, accordingly so uh, you will not uh, be forced to use a switch but you can use a switch but it should be automatically adapted that is also uh, coming what is also coming is uh, sharing resources so for example for this uh, the slides for this uh, presentation is uh, something that we will offer um, here directly in the web academy platform so that there is a uh, box where you can directly download files the presentation is one of these things but it can as well be a uh, project that is being discussed source code that is being discussed so that you can download this uh, right away from this platform now we will uh, send you by email the slides for this uh, presentation but that's also um, coming ah another um, interesting question is uh, session recording so yes we plan to make uh, the recorded session um, available to you for viewing at a later time so uh, this is the first time that we recorded the entire session so we hope that the parameters that we configured for this recording will be good enough so to speak and uh, then you can expect that we will send out by email also a link to the uh, replay of this uh, session um, i see another question the limit of the attendees i believe that the limit uh, for this subscription model that we have is uh, 500 users um, beyond 500 users open talk is uh, using a scheme where it performs um and uh it's a kind of live stream through uh, youtube if my understanding was correct so for now with 500 we have no problems yet maybe in a couple of years we will have to switch our uh, model um, another question is can chat and question um, not overlap so that you have these next to each other uh, that's actually also something on our to-do list something planned that is that it will be uh, more flexible to move things around on your screen so if you now you have a button where you can make the share screen uh, full screen um, but in addition to that we plan um, that you can move if you have a preference for example to have the chat box on the left and the questions on the right that this uh, will also be um, possible the question was when the recorded sessions will be available i expect that these will be available uh, shortly for us technically shortly after this uh, webinar uh, practically uh, we expect that we will send out the emails on uh, monday with the link to uh, the replay all right for now i see no more um ah, there is another question um 
okay that is yes indeed the question from Fabrizio uh, related to um, persisting the chat information when you have a disconnect and would have to reconnect at this moment uh, the client is not persisting um, the previous entered uh, chat messages so um, when you reconnect indeed these chat messages are lost um, we are aware of this we are not sure how critical that is especially for um, the chat messages but it is yes i think i agree it's something that uh, would be nice if that would be uh, addressed that upon reconnection uh, you can see all previously entered chat messages all right i see at this moment no further questions so with that i would like to conclude this uh, very first webinar about the making of the tms web academy how technically this is um, created achieved so i invite you to um, start working with the download for the open talk um, pascal code that is available with a demo application that is available and then you can actually shape it and tune it uh, in the way you want it and what your needs are for uh, this platform so thank you very much for uh, participating it's here uh, friday evening in uh, germany they call this uh, fireabend also for uns fängt jetzt die fireabend an that means that we can uh, chill out now um, and of course we invite you to be here again um, on uh, tuesday where wagner will give his tour around uh, business subscription products coming in 21 with the for me especially exciting uh, GraphQL support that will be I think an awesome uh, feature for everyone to um, yeah have more fine-tuned and um, more performance more flexible uh, client querying from a uh, GraphQL server so everyone thank you for uh, participating if you have ideas feedback don't hesitate send us an email we are listening to you have a good weekend and see you all on tuesday bye bye